Andrew, great to have you on the program. So much excitement around your appointment. I hope you've been feeling a bit of that. Uh, my daughter's definitely excited, mate, when you, when you get to coach a rugby league team, particularly as um, one as proud as the Warriors, mate. So, yeah, I'm definitely feeling the excitement in the town. Uh, just, I think the main thing is everyone's pumped to have us back home, mate. So, yeah, I'm super excited. Where where is the club before before you take over before you start again? Given what the the way that the season ended and everything, what do you find? Where is the club at right now? Well, I think we're at, we're in a phase where everything's fresh. I think um, there's a element of the past that's really strong. Um, there's an element of the new that we're really excited about. Like it's not the same squad, you know, and, and it's not it's not like there's one or two players coming. There's a group of players coming. Um, there's a new staff. And I think um, I think we're back we're back home, so there's definitely stability. There's no excuses. We we know where we're at, um, but we we definitely looked at the past. So we looked at last year and assessed it. And now um, now that we know what we want to achieve and how we know we're going to do it, we're we're looking forward to the future. The reason that I asked you that question is because on at least three, if not four separate occasions when Stacey was coaching, he fronted press conferences afterwards and he accused players of not wanting to defend. No pride in the jersey. You had Jazz Tavanga saying things like the players are mentally weak, that they give up. And so, you know, have you identified those players? Have you spoken to those players? And how do you kind of get your head around the fact that, heck, we had people playing for the club that really at various stages couldn't couldn't be bothered? Yeah, well, the thing about it is some, some of those players aren't here. So um, they've left. There's a big chunk of players who have left the club. So not all those players are here. But like I said, yeah, we definitely sat down with Stacey and as a staff, um, the new staff and the and the staff that was here that were still that were here last year, and we've addressed who they are and and what that is, and we've we've come up with ideas and how we're going to address it, and we have with the group already. Spoke in the group about, you know, this is this is what you guys said last year. This is how we're going to change it, and so we're going to make sure it doesn't happen. We understand, boys. We 100% understand that <laughs> that. Some of those guys who were the drama aren't here, but no excuses. Um, we're looking forward to the future, and, and this is how we're going to do it. It's an attitude that you just wouldn't tolerate? Well, I don't think anyone would, mate. I mean, if you're going to tolerate it, all you're going to do is keep getting the same as the whole, aren't you? You know what I mean? You're just going to keep getting losses. And, uh, yeah, I mean, they, those comments normally come off the back of losses and hard times. Um, and, like I said, I'm, I wasn't there. So, you know, I... Uh, it's really hard for people to comment when they went around that situation, but no, it's certainly not going to tolerate people not trying for the jersey. You come from a situation and and experience where things have been really successful. That the whole structure has been in place from the top to the bottom of the of the of, of the club. How how do you how do you I, I suppose get you know get go from that to this and get this back to that level? Well, mate, we're we're lucky. Like I'm lucky. Like everything is in place. We've got we've got an ownership structure. The CEO is very supportive. Um, he's been giving me everything, every opportunity that I wanted to succeed so far. Um, which there's no excuses, like I mentioned before. Um, mate, we've got the same amount of coaches as the Panthers did. We've got the same amount of players in the roster. Um, we've got a gym that looks exactly the same. The weights, 45 kilo weights, weigh the same as theirs. Look, there's no excuses. We've got everything in place. Well, what's different is we've been away from home and the pathways haven't had that, that base here where they can say, you know, I, I'm going to aspire to, to play for them because the team's been away. You know what I mean? The team's been away. And that's the thing that I, I think the, the, the pathway system is going to be really excited. Andrew McFadden's coming back and the guys who are currently already here in place have done a really good job considering what they've had. So... If I look at the two clubs, that's the only difference. The difference is they've got a really stable pathway system simply because of that, but we're doing a really good job to fix that straight away. Andrew Webster, Warriors coach, is with us. Does, does winning breed winning? It's, I mean, it's the oldest cliche in sport, isn't it? But that, that confidence, that kind of momentum thing, you, you must have felt that at uh, Penrith, where at times you would have felt invincible, I'm thinking. Yeah, I, I, think, I think what... I think confidence is everything. I think the biggest thing I've identified is these boys have got to believe in themselves. I believe in them. Um, that's why I came here. I believe I believe in this group. Um, um, I believe in the staff. I believe in the club. 
I love the fans. There's lots of belief. But I think to your point is when you go through those experiences of winning, even if you're from 18 years old to 16 years old, like some of those guys at Penrith have never even lost 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 a junior game of football, which wow. is crazy. Yeah. Um, and what, what they're, they're used to winning, but what it is, it's scenario-based as well, mate. It's been seen tough times. They're behind on the scoreboard with 10 minutes to go before they know what to do to dig them out of that situation and come away with the victory. So it, it definitely does breed confidence, but also they just learn along the way um, different scenarios and they know what winning looks like. So they, they feel it, they know what it looks like, and they know how to achieve it. Is style of play important to you? And, and what I'm asking is a different kind of Warriors style of play, a unique Warriors style of play. Yeah, we've got it. Every, every coach has got to have a style of play that's going to suit the group of players they've got. Every, every single coach. Because if you coach the way you want to play, the way Andrew Webster wants to play the game, and if that doesn't suit the group we've got, then we're, we're fighting against each other and it's a waste of time. But I think every I think every winning culture or winning team has certain things that are non negotiables. And that is you've got to be a good defensive side, so that's part of your style. You're gonna to have to have some resilience. Every single winning team's gonna to have to have that. And you're gonna to have to be a skillful football side. Because I know this sounds real obvious, but you've got to score points to win games of football. So uh, that's that's the generic stuff, but as far as Warriors style, we're going to come up with our own. What's going to see this group of players to succeed? Uh, so, what do you expect of yourself then? I mean, do you, are you the kind of person that writes goals or lists down? What do you demand of yourself? Oh, I, I, my my job is to create the best environment for every single player to get better. Like, to be, not just get better, to be the best they can, because that will reach the goal because the goal is for every single head coach in the NRL and any single player is to win grand finals. Um, And if you worry about the outcome all the time and you get lost in what's important right now, what's important today, what's important tomorrow, what's important next week. So my, my job is to create the best environment that every single player can play their best football and every staff member can thrive and get the best out of these players. So if I create that environment and the, and the boys attack it with me, um, and, I, and I set the example. Then, then we then we can worry about the outcome later. So the results will come, and then we can be proud of it and really excited, and we can make adjustments for what we need to do. But uh, that's my goal: is to set that environment every day that they're improving, and they're heading in the direction that they want to head, in the direction that we want them to head. Was there any ever any doubt in your mind when this job came up that you wanted this job? I mean, were there other jobs you're thinking, oh, I might take over from Ivan at some stage? Why the Warriors, mate? Mate, I, I think I think any time someone's offered a job, you always go through through the thought process. You sit down with your wife or friends or mentors, and you say, okay, what's the pros and cons about this job? But from day one, I had an amazing, good feeling in my stomach about the place. My gut was saying, this is awesome. And then I went through it all. My head was saying the same thing. So, um, no, I was super excited. Could I have waited um, and and bought my time for another job? I don't really care because it didn't even cross my mind. I was focused once they wanted me. I was excited about here and I wanted to press forward. Um, and I certainly went through the, the uh, decision-making process that I think everyone should. Um, but like I said, my gut was saying, this is, this is perfect. And my head was saying, Exactly the same thing. Andrew Webster, Warriors coach. Sean Johnson, so much expected of him, but we haven't seen him being able to complete a season without being injured. Last year, he was falling off tackles at the end. You know, there's, we've got so much expectation on him again, guiding the team around the park this season. I mean, are you prepared for the fact that this guy may not play all the games? And if so, what's the contingency plan? Man, I'm, I'm, I'm prepared that every player might not play every game. And if, you, if you're not prepared, then you're in trouble. That's why it's a squad. Um, I'm excited. If Sean, if Sean wants to play to his potential and he has that that, um, that real proven ambition to, to really succeed and play at, at, at the standard that he can play, then I think we're in really good shape. If he's, there's some reason he's not injured or this form was a problem, mate, we've got, we've got Luke Metcalf, who's extremely exciting to come from the Shark, who he... He's dying to take that crack at something. And if you looked at his 
his um, his performance and his makeup. Everyone would be really excited about him. We've got Tamati Martin, who's in the halves, who is extremely impressive. He's been to a grand final in the halves. He's been to a grand final in the halves when, when Jonathan Thurston was out injured. You know, he did it with Michael Morgan. Um, and we've also got Ronald Volkman, who debuted last year and coming through. So, look, if Sean's playing his best football, these guys are going to have to fight like hell to take it off him. Um, but, yeah, there's certainly, uh, certainly plenty of opportunities for other people too. If I mean, without giving away too many trade secrets, if you if you could improve the squad, is there, is there, is there any areas that particularly stand out that you think I'd like to be able to improve there? I'd like to add on there. No, I, I think I think every coach looks at a squad, and because of the salary caps always moving, right? So the salary caps always moving. You think, okay, this player's value for money. This is what he's actually producing for the team. And this is what he's producing at an NRL level, at an NRL level in comparison to other players. So the salary cap always have, has a big play in that. And you think, well, that guy's off contract or that guy's retiring, so we need to go and look at this. So we're always constantly looking ahead on how we can improve it for the years to come. But right right this second, I'm completely comfortable with the way that the way it's managed, the roster's been managed before I got here. And I'm happy with a couple of couple of signings we've made since I've come on board. So, um, yes, we're always looking to improve things because if you don't, if you're sitting still, you're never going to get where you want to get to. Um, but I, I'm excited about what's, what, what's, what we've got in. What about the tough times? You, have you thought about what, say, it does go wrong? Or is that kind of thinking not into your head? Or is it, I mean, I've, you know, because I mean, it has gone wrong for so many different Warriors coaches. have all come with great ambitions, great ideas, wanting to do the very best, and it hasn't worked out. Have you, have you, have you thought about if that scenario happens? Or, or do you just think, I deal with what comes in front of me and I'll deal with it as, as it happens? Well, yeah, look, I'm a, I'm a positive guy. I'm, I'm here because I back myself and I, I've got faith in the club. So um, <laughs> I, I'm certainly um, not thinking about if something goes wrong, but if something does, that, I, I think that's when myself and everyone's going to find out what I'm made of. Can I, you know, dig us out of that situation? Can can I, can I get the best out of people when things aren't fine, or am I, or am I going to run away, or am I going to cower into a corner, or am I going to hold my gloves up and and help these boys fight out of it? So I think we're going to find out when when that happens because everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the face. That's it. So, that's it. So when, when that time comes, I think that's when we're going to we're gonna find that out and I'll find it out. But I've, I've, I've signed up for head coaching. Look, uh, this is what I want to do. It's a dream of mine. Um, so I, I 100% know from the moment you take a responsibility like that, you're going to have to be really good in the tough times and, I think I think myself and everyone's going to find out. But to answer your question, I'm confident I'll be good through those periods. Great answer, brilliant answer. Now I've deliberately not asked you about top eight ambitions or anything else because you had a great answer when you were asked that question, and it's like we're here to win every single game that we play. And I think rather than get bogged down, or then that quote becomes something that people cling on to with things. And 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 so that's you know your ambitions for the season is to get out there to play well to win games to bring pride back to this jersey to just have a team that is just rocking and rolling is it is it is it, is it sounds as simple as that? It's as simple as that. like honestly I sit in I've been I've been in enough clubs to know every team sits in there whether they've had a good year before that or they haven't every team's goal is to win the comp every team's goal is to win as many games as they can. The best teams don't lost in that. So boys, that's obvious. This is what we want to achieve. Tuck it away here. Now let's worry about winning today. What are we going to do today to win? And it, it's become a real boring cliche in sport. I reckon for fans, oh, here we go, another bloke talking about process. No, no, that's no, right, mate. It's what we want to hear. It's but exactly it's, what we want to hear, yeah, Andrew. Yeah, you just can't put you just can't put the cart before the horse. You know what I mean? But everyone's got the same ambition as to lift that trophy at the end of the year. Uh, but how we how we go about it and how we fight for it, that's going to be the most important stuff. Oh, look, you're fantastic. Thanks for giving us so many minutes. And you can look, you can feel it as soon as you land it, I bet. It doesn't matter what happened last year, man. Warriors fans are nuts, man. They do in love. It doesn't matter whether she, <laughs> yeah, whether she leaves, takes the car, takes the kids. They still love her, man. That's the thing. <laughs> oh, mate, that's one of the reasons I came back. Oh, I mean, I was assistant coach here for two years, loved the place, loved the fans. Um, and to see that game when the Tigers against the Tigers when they came home, you just see how much they love their teammates. So um, I love the passion. I'm excited.
All the very best, mate. I really genuinely wish you all the very best. I hope I hope it goes as well as you wish it will. Thank you very much.